you beautiful awesome people and welcome back to a special first impressions. For those who aren't aware of this series, it is a series where I go through and I take a look at games. I do them completely blind and I'll review them as I go along. And then I work out if I play this game for a YouTube series or I go and play it for a Twitch series. And most times it will be done as a Twitch series as a revisit. But in this case, this might be a very special first impressions because not only is this game currently free on the Steam store at the moment because I'm a little late to this party, but I was also given a game code to be able to play this game early in beta. But unfortunately, a couple of technical issues on the background, plus me being sick recently, led me to being a little bit late to this party. But I decided to review it regardless, because A, the game does look really interesting, and B, may as well give a little bit of love to the indie development companies, because they are the ones who really truly do need these reviews to give them a little bit of love and just get their games out there. Because hey, I have discovered so many good indie games over the years, it's kind of worth kind of giving them a bit of love here and there. I kind of wish there was a couple of more indie games I'd be able to cover on the First Impression series. So here we go, this is probably our first indie developed um, First Impressions we're doing. I don't know if Temtem counts because that had a lot of uh, publicity already. But yeah, this seems to be a very underrated game so far. It's a hack and slash by the looks of it, and it's kind of got a lot of metaphorical uh, RPG stuff elements behind it. So as I said, this was done by an indie development company. It's been two years in the making, and it's just come out for free. I think it was released earlier this month to the general public. It's still kind of in beta or alpha at the moment, so it's still got a lot of things um, in the workings to try and improve it and whatever. Um, so yeah, the whole story really is, it's a modernized hack and slash combat, players battle a nightmarish depression that lives in a young woman's subconscious. Every slumber is a different dungeon and you must unlock the power of your dreams to see a new day. Play as our main protagonist Cassidy as we dive in her subconscious to take on the nightmares she wrestles with while she's also trapped in a deep depression. Now, I've actually covered a couple of, well I haven't covered a couple of games, I have played a couple of games that dive into the kind of like deep dark, um, gloomy themes such as, you know, depression. I've also, well, I can't say the other ones because YouTube's fun and all that. Um, but they tend to be diamonds in the rough. I kind of wish those games had a bit more publicity. I did cover Brothers, which does have a couple of dark themes behind them that I've kind of got to tiptoe around, unfortunately. But, you know, this is YouTube. When I, If I do cover this on Twitch, I'm going to go in a lot more deeper. So I really do enjoy these type of games. And as someone who does suffer with chronic depression as well as anxiety disorders and all that. This should probably hit pretty hard home with me and any other audience videos. So I should probably say, yeah, a bit of a um, warning to those who do suffer from those type of things. There might be some warning, like things in here that might trigger a little bit. I'm, I don't know, but I'm just going to put that out there just in case it does. So this game does feature some expansive combat systems that reward skilled play, shoot off finger guns, rend the earth below, you whip a yo-yo into enemies while you slew a dream, inspire weaponry, adventure through six beautiful haunting dreamscapes to discover powerful artifacts to real street uh, scenery and multitude of unique events, challenges and puzzles, day night gameplay, explore the waking and dreaming world to learn Cassidy's story, your actions in one affect the other, which is quite interesting, so kind of one of those your actions will affect future gameplay, which is something I really do enjoy because it does make you kind of question every action you do in this game. Deep item progression that creates synergies and new possibilities every run, encouraging experiment experimentation and high replayability. Wrap the dreamscape around you with lucid powers, surreal dream attacks and abilities that manipulate the elements, warp space and even control time itself. Uh, live Cassidy's waking life and forge friendships with the people around her. Empower Cassidy with her hopes and memories to dispel the darkness of her nightmares. And a beautiful dynamic soundtrack composed by Dale North that adapts to the player's experience. And already while I've been explaining this, I have kind of been listening to the title screen music. It's very relaxed, it's kind of somberish in a way. You know, it's not high impact. Considering the main topic theme or like the central themes of this game, I wouldn't be expecting anything really cheerful unless of course something cheerful is actually happening in a game. Say we've interacted, we've made a new friend for Cassidy, it might go a little bit cheerful or if something's going bad or we're about to die. I'd say the music would go very darkish, very... I'm trying to think of the words because I said I'm not very good at describing music. I, I know in my head what they mean but explaining what outlier is very different. Alright, anyways, it's 
um, advised to use a, a controller for this game, which is good because I only use a controller. Um, so there was a tutorial. I actually booted this up to see um, what options and what other things I needed to know beforehand. So in regards to options, it's very basic. We've got camera shake, force feedback, master volume and all that. Graphics, uh, your typical graphic stuff. Color vision deficiency severity, which again, I've always mentioned this. I do like that they, uh, uh, uh wow, can I, can I English today? I do like that they, um, serve to those who have colorblind deficiencies. I don't suffer it personally, but it is also something that I'd like to see a lot of developers think about to give their audience, you know, much more range and allow for, you know, your special needs part of your audience to be able to play as well. So I do like to see that. Plus, there was also an auto detect for quality and all that. I'm on Epic apparently, so I hope there's no lag. If there is, I'll have to turn it down. There was also a warning too if you have an older NVIDIA graphics card that there might be issues with this, this game to make sure the update and all that. So if there is a couple of issues when you play this game, probably just double check your graphics card and make sure it's all up to date or it's not too old. AKA my laptop wouldn't be able to run this at all because it's eight years old. And then controls, you've got your typical um, key bindings and all that. Lock cursor A, melee at cursor. That might be annoying. Dodge at cursor. Okay, maybe not. That might be good. That's off. Defend at cursor. We'll see how it goes though because I'm not using cursor. I'm using my gamepad, so that's good. Uh, we have like, it's, uh, wow, there actually seems to be quite a lot of stuff. All right, well, we'll start off with the replay tutorial because I, as I said, I did kind of skip that. All right, Stream Escaper is best experience with a gamepad. If you're encountering performance issues, please update your graphics driver. There are known issues with NVIDIA drivers. All right. Here we go. Dungeons and Immortal. That sounds like a ripoff of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, this kind of reminds me of Gauntlet. Alright, so... Oh, we do have a bit of a cursor. So cursor, not what I thought. So at the moment, we can only run. I'm pressing a couple... Actually, this really does remind me of Gauntlet. Like, just a couple of things on the menu and the hub actually really do remind me of Gauntlet. So if you haven't played Gauntlet, give that a go. So I guess we go through here. Pick up. Hold. Holding B recycles items into currency. Press B to interact with items. Okay, there we go. We got ourselves a sword. X the combo attack. If you time your combos with white flashes, you'll do bonus damage. Alright, I would have expected the attacks to be A. But we'll see what the other... Oh, that's a powerful attack. And then whereas... X seems to be our quick attack. Okay, so... Okay, now that kind of, kind of makes sense. If it was just a, your attack, then I'd expect A, but if we got a Y for alternative attack. So that kind of like allows us to have a bit more of a knockback. And also probably like provide for combos. As you saw there, if I just press Y, they had huge knockback and probably even stagger some enemies. You can hold both ranged and melee weapons. Right, so we can also pick up ammo. So at the moment we've got a bow. So right trigger, I'm using an Xbox controller too. And use the right analog stick to aim. So if you're using like, I say if you're using keyboard and mouse, it'd be mouse to control, like aim and then uh, whatever buttons you use to attack on the keyboard for that. All right, so we can also dodge. I'm assuming I had to dodge the red line. You can also equip the shield. So L, L trigger to block and then tap to parry. So. Here we go. It's like a couple of frames before you get hit. Okay, it's a little bit finicky with the parry because you can't. Uh, it's got to be very close to get a parry, so uh, eh. it kind of allows for like very precise gameplay there. That's for sure. You can hold two lucid attacks. Cold snap will shatter frozen enemies. So LB primary lucid attack and RB 
Uh, okay, there we go. Lucid attacks each have their own cooldown. Where's that to when it comes to cooldown? Oh yeah, up in the top button there. Getting used to the hub is a little bit awkward, but we'll get used to that. Some rooms will have unique events. This fountain will fill your lucid meter. So what's uh, Dream Rush? Dream Rush slows down time using lucid energy. So kind of like NP, I'd say. If we're going by typical RPG mechanics. Lucid refills as you defeat enemies. Yeah, that second bar next to our health bar, which is the big red button, is our lucid meter. Some rooms will be locked. Keys can be found by smashing destructibles or defeat enemies. In this case, it'll be this. There's the key. I do kind of feel, though, when it comes to the tech, something might be missing. Okay, we've got bombs. So, D down. Boom! There's our key. Some portals require a key and a bomb to open. Bombs can be used in combat to deal heavy damage and precise timing as well. Alright, what's this? Fast travel to a previous room. Ah, oh, we've been trapped, so if we use the... And then... Where would we go? Back here? Whoa! What was that? Hello! Whoa, oh, 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 I thought my graphics card was blowing up just then. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Whoa! Not one of these games that screws with your mind. Whoa, okay, this is trippy, but as I said, I do enjoy these type of games, especially if there's a metaphor behind them or they're meant to be representing something. Alright. So, we've got a cup. Oh, Challenge, do not dodge. Well, that's easy. Wow, this is taking a lot of hits. Hold on. Oh, add bombs. All right. There we go. That took a lot of hits. Oh, oh, oh. My health is full, so I don't need to use that. Arrows? Do I have a bow? I don't think I do. I don't have a shield, so there's no point using that. Alright. Come on. I can't dodge. Two, three. Here we go. Is that kind of like little challenge runs too? So I, I really like those type of games where they expect you to go through and use your skills to try and beat a room. So I'm going to see if there was like a... I know that wasn't destructible. Alright. Hand cranked generator. Successfully parries. Temporally boost your global damage. Neat. Alright, I didn't take any health yet, so that's good. Or no damage. Oh. Oh, I took damage. I didn't realise that was going to do anything. Alright. Alright, I'm just going to use my lucid dream there. Or one of my, um, skills. Oh, I do have a shield. Nice. Didn't quite do a parry. It wasn't quite close enough. As I said, it's a couple of frames off getting hit by the looks of it. Alright. We haven't got any bombs yet. I'm trying to figure out where the bomb count is. Is there anything I didn't work out? Oh, that was a bomb. Alright, I didn't realise I had bombs. I guess we go through here. As The first thing I think of is like Binding of the Isaac when you're going through different rooms. Oh. Where are we? Wait, what is that? And I'm in ward. I'm going to get eaten. At what? Okay, that was cool and pretty at the same time. But oh, oh god. Boss fight! I bet he just started the game and I'm already in a boss fight. Go Whoa! Alright. Oh, what did I do? 
I was gonna use a bomb. Oh god, what? I got- Whoa! Oh god, I- I- Oh! So if it touches the mine, I'm guessing it gets damaged. Ah! I was trying to be smart, but it didn't work. Where is it going? I managed to dodge because I was just dodging around. Go figure. Alright, where are you going now? I like the music too! Whoa! Oh! Come on, where are you going? Alright, we're back to this phase. Nice. Come in. Alright, managed to get some hits on it. I did use my skill. Whoa! It's a hurricane! Sorry, I don't really rock like a hurricane today. I'll, I'll pass on that. Come on. I think I took a hit, but it's alright. Nice, I got a lot of hits in there thanks to my skill. I actually quite like now that- uh, Whoa! Was that a wind cutter? Sorry, that gave me Quest 64 vibes just there. Which it should, because as I said, whoa! RPG vibes. Wind, fire, water, elements. Dude, I could get on board with this. I hope there's. A Am I dead? I have like barely any health. But dude, I can get on board with the soundtrack. I hope there's a soundtrack I can download for this. Okay, he's still alive, but I think I've got one more hit and I'm dead. Alright, survive that. He's probably gonna do it again though. I'd say. Rule of three when it comes to video games, so... Oh, oh damn it, I didn't react fast enough. <laughs> oh, oh, I went rips. Alright, results of hometown part one of two. Uh, next, uh, next day, 30 minutes, play, play again, defeat fear. It's difficult to face your fear, especially if it's a leviathan that emerges from your subconscious. Play again to conquer fear and experience brand new dream layouts and item loadouts. As our first t indie title, Dreamscaper, means a lot to the three of us and we're happy to share the prologue with you. If you haven't yet, wish whitelist, uh, wish, whitelist, wish list the full game to get notified when it drops. Cool. So yeah, it's kind of roguelite in a way too. Crafting gifts. You have found crafting resources within Cassidy's dream. You can now craft gifts by opening up Dream Journal to the dr crafting page. Gifts that Cassidy crafts can be given to residents of the waking world to level up their relationship and unlock powerful new abilities and item in the dream world. Higher level crafting resources allow Cassidy to craft more creative gifts, create, uh, creative and thoughtful gifts level up relationships more quickly. Isn't that like a whole relationship thing in Persona as well? Again, kind of like taking Seated Run. Seated Run allows you to play the same set of dreamscapes over and over again by entering a seed here before starting a run. Try sharing sheets with seeds with friends to complete for the fastest win time. Okay, so I'm as I said, I'm definitely feeling uh, Binding of the Isaac type of vibes here because that has like different ways of like different RNG, different seeds in order to go through uh, different levels and everything. So if we sleep, I say that starts our run. All right, let's do this run. I don't know if it's the same run I just did. But if it is roguelike... Oh, I've got different weapons this time. Neat! I have a jewel wielder. Oh, this is the level I was in. Oh, this is different. It's different layout. I think I... No, I didn't take a hit. Two, three... The bullets... Okay, the lights above it show how many bullets it's got left before it takes a break. Okay, I'm gonna slash that open. Two, three. So for those who did play Binding of Isaac would also know that you also started with a different loadout every time too. That was RNG, whether you started with something decent or you started with something ter terrible. Alright, what's... Oh, this is the um, refill. Oh no, that was a health refill. Well, I did. I 
kind of needed it. Oh, we've got another bullet and we've got two floating enemies. Ow. Right, bliss. I don't know what bliss does. I think that might be a, a crafting thing. Sorry, thing. I, I can't speak today. Terrible time to be like not being able to speak. Alright, I'm going to wait for that. Two, three. So if you like, come. Oh, yep, I knew that was going to start firing. I was a little slow on that one. Two, three. Right, that's down. Although I took way too many stupid hits there. That was. That's my own fault. Alright, what if I go up? I could definitely see this as a speedrunning game. Like one of those high RNG speedrunning games. The more this game gets developed, I could totally see this as like a speedrunning game that people could enjoy. Oh, this has got more bullets. Back off. More bullets means it's got a longer recharge time too. I was wondering if the colour of those enemies indicated how much health... Whoa, it's still alive. Right, I can focus on this enemy. Right, so the alternative attack is that. Bye-bye. As I said, it's definitely a stronger attack. Solace and health potion. Yep, I'll drink that. As I said, I took way too many hits on one particular fight, which I wasn't too happy about, so I'll go through here. Ooh! I have, like, an... Uh, item place. Poison vial. Adds poison to all your attacks. Ooh. Wow, don't want to spill this stuff. Oh, yeah. I'll take... Oh, there was only one I could take. Oh! Oopsies! Well, I'll know that for next time. Ah, yeah. Ah, oh, yep. No, this screams Binding of Isaac. Oh, this is not a bad thing. I do really enjoy Binding of Isaac. And a lot of times the games will take inspiration from other games. But it's still unique enough that, you know, if you hadn't played Binding of the Isaac, you wouldn't have thought of that. Um, but the whole general formula itself isn't just exclusive to Binding of Isaac. It can definitely work. I've played Rogue Legacy, which is another game similar to that of Binding of Isaac in a way. It's roguelike. Is this a puzzle? Ooh! Oh, I love games like this. So where am I going? Do I have to go to, like, there? Or do I have to, like, make it so everything matches up? Uh... What would you like me to do? But yeah, it's got a jigsaw puzzle, so yeah, this is definitely a puzzle. I don't know what it wants me to do, though. That was the only thing that wasn't kind of explained, so it's kind of like, oh... Hi, yeah, would you... what would you like me to do? Which is a bad thing because if you haven't played this game before it's kind of a little confusing as to what you want to want your player to do uh maybe they don't want me to go up that way maybe they want me so that's about the only thing i could say about this part is it needs to be explained about you know what you want the player to do instead of just you know expecting them to understand what to do because at this point, I have no idea what you want me to do. Because, like, I can do that, then do that, but then, yeah, I, I don't know if that's actually correct or not. Because, uh, like, you know, that matches up, and of course, that would match up. But because I have no direction on what to, what I'm supposed to do or where it's supposed to go, I haven't got a clue. I walk straight into an enemy. Oh, there's two of them. I didn't... S oh, yeah, I've got poison. So luckily I attacked them and then I put a little bit of poison damage onto them. So they will... Ah, oh, yeah. The colour of them definitely indicates how much health they've got left. Because they were like a really nice, you know, a nice light sky blue. And now they're gone white, which indicates their health. No, I'll appreciate that. Instead, oh, that was a bad idea. I didn't realize that was going to happen. It's a nice subtle touch of showing their HP. So it, it shows the player is paying attention on how much health the uh, enemy has without using health bars. 
So being symbolic about um, an enemy's HP. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. The only thing so far, as I said, um, that I haven't quite liked is the way that text has appeared um, at the tutorial part. I kind of feel that could have done a little bit of a nicer job on that instead of just being a text up in the corner. Whether it be in just like a little text box or something like that. Just to make it a little bit more appealing and a bit more appeasing on the eye. Because everything else so far is graphically stunning. Oh, even the boss room. is graphically stunning. But um, just that part so far felt very out of place. Alright, we've already seen this. As much as I'd love to watch it again, I want to actually beat this boss. So having a skip for like... Skipping that is definitely appreciated. Alright, what's the first attack they did? Alright, I skipped that. That was good. That was the first attack I got hit by because I didn't realise what I had to do to dodge that. That'll hit that. Oh, I could do a lot. Oh, okay. That was my bad. I didn't realise I could do another skill. Oh, I couldn't. I probably could hit a few times. Alright, now we're going for the turbos. Through three... Alright, now we're going for... Ow! That does a lot of damage! About a quarter of my HP just there, just from incorrectly dodging that. I am going to hit that, though. Alright, got a cup, one extra hit in there. Ow, ow, I think I got... Oh, I just realised the enemy's health bar. Because I'm blind and not paying attention. It kind of blended in a little bit too, right, being at the bottom. So if you're going to put it at the bottom of the screen, it kind of does sometimes help to make it a little bit more... I know, again, that's something that the, the player would actually see. I dodged it. Just. Because I didn't actually notice that because I just thought that was for something else. Alright, we're... Just around half damage, which is good. Definitely playing a lot better. Oh! Oh god, I thought I could stay in one spot, but I couldn't. He obviously moved a little bit. Alright. I'll know that for next time. Oh, here comes this attack. Alright, dodge that one this time. Where are you going? At the beginning, I'm like, oh, this would be an easy boss. All i got to do is just memorise a couple of things. Nope, it's not as easy even when you know what's going on. Which is good. So, false sense of security there, too. Alright, around three-quarter damage. God, I'm starting to sweat. Oh, yeah, the wind cutter. I was wondering when this was going to come up, so I now I've got to figure out where he's going. And move away, because if I take another hit, I'm probably going to die. Or two hits, I don't know if it stops me on zero. Okay, luckily I was quite far away from that. I think it's random too, I can't work out where he's going to pop up for that. But yeah, I'll definitely... um give high praise to the OST at the moment. Oh god, not this again. If I go over this way, I should dodge all of them because the... Oh, the cones would be bigger. No, they actually do move. I was testing that. Oh, I died again. <laughs> I was doing so well. Right, next day, 1 hour 45 minutes. I did pick up a couple of resources. Uh, damage dealt, damage taken... We could sleep, or we could wake. I might wake up and have a bit more of a look around at Cassidy's room. Leave? Apartment, cafe, bookshop, bar. We'll go to the cafe. I'm guessing we can go and meet with new people. Chit chat, 30 minutes. Ch uh, gift, well, chit chat. Tamil intentionally explains to Cassidy the origins of a famous rapper. I can't... Okay, so... I can't gift... Anyone else around here? I also guess to at certain times of day is when certain people also rock up at certain places, so... Memorising locations is also going to be another thing as well. 
plus time management too. Alison and Cassidy gush over a classic fantasy novel. Anything else I could explore here? Nope. I wonder if you can actually pick up some overworld items too for like crafting. Or is that just in the dream world or the dreamscape? Okay, I can't go to the bar, so there's only like a certain amount of time I can spend out. She's got a Sony PlayStation, huh? And also I love too, like, Seated Run, they use the rep visual representation of a tree, which is probably going to sprout seeds or something like that, so I really like that. Dream Journal. Uh, Mallory unlocked by getting to know Tamil. Oh, so these are like other areas. Most people don't notice me, so I guess I'm kind of a ninja. Throw out multiple deadly kunai once before... Oh! So they're actually like... Oh, oh, it's a scythe! I so want that! So this is where we can craft, I'm assuming. Uh... I can't go on... Oh, okay, so available is what I've got. Uh, level 6. So I've got, like, basic stuff. Uh, here we go. Can here we go. The ones in green I can get. An abstract poem. I got an achievement for that as well, but it's not popping up on my actual video. I've got um, artist 1 of 40, so I've got to probably craft 40 items. Oh, there was a way of toggling available, so why? Okay, I've got nothing available now. Okay, uh... There was also notes. Co-worker seems around my age, pretty serious, self-serious, a tough neck to crack. Likes hip-hop. We also met Alison. Very bubbly, into some of the same stuff I am, passionate about making a difference, and she likes fantasy. Alright, so we've looked at all that. Alright, I guess the next thing we can do is... Probably head off to another run. Alright, let's sleep. We'll get a different run this time too. So it's roguelike, with fantasy RPG-ish type of thing, and a hack and slash. So it's got a lot of multiple different genres. Oh, okay, I was wondering if that meant anything. There was like two, you know, um... Ghostly figures back there. I was wondering if interacting with them actually did anything. There is also something off to the left. Oh yeah, here we go. Well, that one's got a kunai. I also got a different weapon this time too. It looks like I'm a little bit faster too. I got a key. Uh, I can't. Oh, no. I do have a ranged weapon. Alright. I only have, like, five, um, ranged wep- uh, what do you call it? Uh, ammo. That's what I'm thinking. Alright. Bust that open. Health potion. Oh, I don't need health potion. I'm full at the moment. Alright, we'll move on. Got another little, um, mini boss fight. If that's what you want to call it. Got another turret. Alright, back off away from them while it fires. I guess you could almost shield in front of these, as I said. Alright, bust that open. I could definitely feel myself getting a little bit better at this game, too. Alright, got a health refill. Ah, oh, another puzzle. Again, wouldn't really know what they want me to do. If they want me to have the entire thing lit up. Or if there's like a certain thing they want me to reach. Because then unfortunately this is where kind of the puzzle dies. No, not really. Hold on. We can go up there. And then down like that. Is 
There is that option. Uh, there is also that. And I think that might be where the cookie crumbles again. Yeah, unfortunately when it comes to the puzzles, I'm not really too sure what they want me to do. So that's probably something either in future updates they need that to be explained, or uh, I'm just being dumb, since it is a puzzle. Whether it be like using a, help, a hint system, or I don't know, just have a little bit of tutorial come up, because that wasn't in the tutorial how to do puzzles. Oh, I kind of went off course there on my second hit. Ah, I was a little too slow on that one. Trying to play a little bit risky so I can get used to the boss, which was coming up to again. Alright, hello, you Leviathan buddy. I would like to go f well. I'd like to get pretty close to beating this thing. This is actually getting addictive, which is scary. Whoa, you're getting. You're a bit fast there. So he's also got a bit of a um, pattern. Oh, I think I got here. That was a good start. That was a little close to comfort. Alright, he's going to come up again. As I said, I can't see like where he's coming up, so I'm assuming that's all RNG. I do remember a couple of bosses from the Binding of Isaac that actually did have that type of thing where it's like, you had no idea where they were coming from, so you just dodge, 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 and hope yet you didn't get hit. Nice. A little bit low on damage. Ow, I unfortunately missed my dodge. I think he's going to come up and do the bullet stream now. Alright, I missed that second one, which was good. Alright, we're going to go for another swim, are we? Alright, sorry to interrupt your stream, uh, your little swim, but I would like to deal some damage to you. Oh, we're going for the hurricanes. At least they can kind of tell you when they're coming up. Ay, 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 that was bad. My eye went off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How I got caught in the middle of that because he also came in my direction. Nice. It looks like we do a couple of hits beforehand, then go for the combo. Whoa! Then go for the combo, you can do more damage. Alright, where are you going? Ah. I think I got hit there. I was playing it too close for comfort, too. Where are you? I have worked out how to dodge that one. Alright, good. Where are we? I missed! Is he gonna speed up, I wonder? Nah. Unfortunately, I ran it. Oh, it's a domino effect! Where are you going? Nah, he went down. Damn it, I went around with no damage. Get out of the. Wow! Nearly at ground zero there. Alright, we're back. Ah, too early! Come on, bye bye. Come on! This Leviathan thinks I got all day! I don't! <laughs> Ah, damn it. Although we are doing pretty well, I just can't screw this up, which I probably will. Low health, which is not a good thing. Oh, I got hit! No! No! <laughs> God damn it, this is so far addicting. I generally do like these genre of games because it's just 
you get into it, then you see how far you can get, and then from there the addictiveness comes in because it's like, oh, can I get a little bit further than that? Rogue Legacy, Binding of Isaac, what other games was there? There was also that recent one, um, Cell, Cell, Cell. Oh my god, I can't remember what it was called. It was massive. I watched like a couple of speed runs on it too, and I can't remember the name of it. I do remember there was Cell in the name though, and I was actually tempted to like stream it myself. I was like, oh. And now it's massive because I think that was an indie developed game too. Um, I'm probably going to leave it there <laughs> because I don't know how much more I can do without getting infuriated on on recording, which is both a good and bad thing, but it's just, oh, uh, they're fun, but they're also infuriating at the same time. All right, so general verdict, though, I really like this game and it's going in the right direction. As I said, there have been plenty of games beforehand that have actually done what this game has tried to achieve. There is also a story to it, although it's, again, Rogue Legacy and Binding of Isaac, which is my two main examples at the moment, have had, like, stories behind all the elements of roguelike and everything. Um, there is obviously a couple of things that can be approved on at the moment when it comes to aesthetics and everything. I kind of feel the enemy's health bar could probably be improved in some way. As I said, I didn't actually see it because it, you know, kind of blended in with the rest of the UI, and I was like, oh, there's an actual boss health bar. The tutorial text and everything kind of could be improved a li little bit as that it looks kind of meh and it's, you know, it's kind of bland against the rest of the visuals. Everything else visually lies looks real nice except for the tutorial text. It's just plopped up there in the top corner. It's like, yeah, okay, it's, it's there, I can read it and everything, but it's not... You know, it kind of takes away from the visuals. That's something I wish they would go through and probably, you know, maybe in future updates improve that. Performance-wise, though, runs fine. I haven't got any issues with it. Um, then again, I've got a decent uh, graphics card and everything like that. Maybe they could, that could help. Control scheme works pretty fine, too. Does take a little while to get used to with the whole... Then again, it's gamepad I haven't played. Um, it does take a little while for me to learn control schemes anyway, so that's probably a mute point. <laughs> But the control scheme does feel very nice. It doesn't feel out of place in any point, in any sort of way, and it just comes down to the player to kind of get used to, I guess. So um, that's a, that's a positive. Uh, when it comes to the puzzles, though, uh, there was like one where it said "don't dodge." I wasn't sure if it applied to like all of those boss fights or just that particular one. So again, uh, same with the puzzle rooms too, I guess. Um, informing the player on what they should be doing should be kind of made a little bit more clearer. If you wanted them to destroy the room of enemies, I guess that makes sense, there's enemies there. Uh, if there's a particular self-imposed challenge, though, that the particular room has, they need to make that um, a little bit more clearer and probably keep it up on the screen as well because people, you know, sometimes on harder difficulties, I'd say if they are to add in, like, harder difficulties and all that, People are going to forget because they're focusing on game gameplay sometimes. There'll be moments too where I'll be kind of playing along and if you're used to a certain habit, you're like, oh, wait, I can't do that. So if there's a constant reminder on the screen, that could help as well with certain players too. And just little things like that. There's some small little things that could be improved. But overall, as I said, it is a general positive experience. And I'm really glad that this team has come along two years in the making. It feels like quite a polished game so far. Um, as I said, there is a couple of negatives, but it's not hindering the game in any way. I, I can still play it, and I can definitely feel this would be a game I could get definitely addicted to and definitely could play on stream and try and get other people to play. It's a game at the moment I could definitely recommend, which I am. If you do want to give this game a go, it's currently free on Steam. Um, pick it up, see what you guys think, and if you like it, Definitely support the team behind this, which is a three-person team so far. So, yeah, for three people, definitely very impressive. And I definitely want to experience, like, the storyline too, with the whole relationship stuff, um, making friends with people and how certain things um, apparently will impact future parts of the story and everything. That's something I'm definitely really interested in about. So um, I'm not sure if it's in the game at the moment, but if it is, getting to that part is definitely be really really exciting some of the crafting stuff and getting to know people will reward you with weapons and all that that's another good thing to try and get the relationships up and everything um yeah so fundamentally pretty sound and again 
I, yeah, I definitely want to experience. I wasn't expecting this. You know, normally when I get a game, I see a game, it's like, you know, I'll go in it, not sure what to expect. I'll keep my expectations pretty low um, because, you know, if there's a small team behind it, you got to keep it pretty low because they don't have the budget that a lot of AAA developers do. Um, but yeah, I wasn't expecting this. This is a game I could, as I said, I might end up binging. It's just, yeah. Damn, it, it's, I'm, I've got the itch. I've got the itch for roguelike again. <sighs> no, say goodbye to 40 hours of my life again. <laughs> no, I, I, as I said, I really enjoy roguelike. I get super seriously addicted to that particular genre. So the fact that this game's now giving me the itch to do that again, oh, it means it's done something right. All right, so I think you've listened to me dribble on enough about this game, as I said, it's definitely recommended. I like it, and I definitely want to have more people kind of experience this game. So to finish it off, um, the people who gave me the code for this game, thank you so much for giving me the experience to, you know, go through and actually experience this quite wonderful game so far. And to the team behind it, um, that is... Da, 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 da. Didn't, uh, what's the team? Afterburner? Um, I wish you all the best with this game and as I said so far you've done a great job couple of things you could definitely improve on so I look forward to those updates in the future you've definitely got me on board for this game and yeah for everyone else thank you for taking the time to check out this video hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time make sure to stay beautiful and ciao for now but not forever ciao